What's going on, guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. So, um, as some of you might know, I have been overseas for the past five months or so, and uh, primarily in Asia and also the Middle East. And what I did was before I left, I literally stockpiled hand to hand combat technique videos. Um, so that I could deploy one every single Saturday for you guys until I got back stateside. Well, I'm by the time you see this video, I will have run out of those. <laughs> so now um, I'm going to have to get creative. What I've decided to do for this Saturday is give you a really amazing, awesome calisthenics body weight workout that I like to do while I am traveling to keep me in shape. Um, it is super important that while we're not able to train, you know, whether that's MMA, jujitsu, whatever your pleasure is, that we keep in good uh, combat readiness condition, right? And that can be very hard. There's a guy, probably a lot of you know him, Andrew Bustamante, ex-CIA um, officer. And he had a great quote, which I could not have said any better is that the day that you leave for a deployment or your vacation or whatever it is, is usually going to be your peak physical readiness day. You're, you're not going to be in any better shape than that day that you leave if you're doing it right. And then every week subsequent until you get back stateside or wherever your home is and you start training again, uh, you have the potential to really, really deteriorate uh, from there. Now, this workout is going to prevent the deterioration. It may or may not um, improve your physical condition. It certainly has the potential to put size on you. And if you're not already in great shape, it can boost your physical readiness. But if you do like I train two, three hours a day, it's I'm not going to be able to get that level of physical readiness like on my own in various countries. You know, sometimes you're at a hotel with an ice gym. Sometimes you're at a hotel with like a shitty gym. Sometimes you're not at a hotel and you're at a boarding house or you're in an apartment rental or whatever. And maybe you don't have access to anything. Look, you can do these workouts anywhere. You don't need any equipment. You can do it in front of your tent. Like you can do them wherever. And that's the beauty of it. So I call these my deployment um, workouts. And uh, not that I'm on a, any kind of like deployment, but it um, it's deployment ready workouts. You can literally do these things anywhere. And so I want to share it with you and I will put it down in the description below. I will write out the exact workout. So if you want to try it, try it. it you'll like it. I guarantee you if you're, if you're a sick bastard like me and you like torturing yourself and you like putting on size and like staying in really good fighting shape, you'll like this. So enjoy it. And listen, let me know down in the comments what you want to see. I've got some cool ideas, but if you want to see stuff on how to detect, you know, foot surveillance or how to whatever, right? Like get creative. Let me know what you want. And if I have personal experience with it, I'll share it with you. If not, I won't talk about it. But in the meantime, enjoy this for the next couple of weeks, at least. Um, it'll be creative videos like this until we get back into the hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques videos on Saturday. All right, enjoy the, enjoy the workout and hopefully you can follow along uh, afterwards and try it out for yourself. Cheers, guys. All right, so the first thing that I'll usually do is start off with walking on the treadmill for five minutes if it's available. If not, <clears throat> I'll kind of just move around. Then I usually move into about three minutes of shadow boxing. I'm not the best at shadow boxing. I really don't enjoy shadow boxing that much, but I make myself do it just to kind of keep the movements alive in my head. <clears throat> and again, when we're shadow boxing, it's important to make sure that we're really visualizing an opponent hitting back <clears throat> so after shadow boxing i'll usually move on to some skip knees and i'll just do this again as a warm-up it's not like i'm really trying to like program myself for the skip knees i've already thrown a bunch in my life but i want to get moving and get the heart rate elevated before i get into the burpees so i usually start with regular burpees <clears throat> as you can see uh, they go up come down and then when I stand up, I'll usually try to turn it into like a lunge kind of deal as well and work the legs. The thing I like about burpees is you're working like almost all of your body at once. So I'll start off with like the normal easy ones and I'll go with kind of as many as I can. 
20, 30, 40, whatever I'm, whatever I'm able to do at that day. And then after that, the next set is going to be burpees with mountain climbers. Now that we banged out the first reps of the burpees, I'm going to add in between this set and the second set of burpees, some air squats. My form isn't great, but hey, I'm working on it. And uh, we're going to do that. Now we move on to the mountain climbers. After the mountain climbers are banged out, mountain climber burpees rather, are banged out, then I do 15 more air squats. And then after those 15 air squats, I'm going to go back into the burpees and do burpees with at the end of each 10 burpees that I do, I'm going to do 10 shoulder taps and I'll do that for however many I need to do. And then at the end, I'll usually do um, some shadow boxing with some burpees, but I turn it into a sprawl. And for any of you out there who wrestle and grapple, you know how important sprawling is. It's really important that we keep our cardio up. Uh, for the sprawls. But then after the burpees are all complete, I'm going to move into body weight lunges. And I'm usually going to do 10 to 15 lunges per leg and three sets total of that. And don't worry, I'm going to write this whole workout program down below in the in the description. So if any of you guys want to, you can try it out. I'm going to warn you right now, you're going to be sore uh, the next day, like first time or a couple of times that you do it. But it's a killer workout, and I, I really enjoy this. So then it's time to move into abs, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three sets of one-minute long planks and three sets of leg raises. And I apologize. I thought I was actually recording these leg raises, but I guess I wasn't. You'll have to use your imagination on this stunning body here. But then after that, what I'll do is um, three sets – of bicycle crunches and I'll do the bicycle crunches. I'll do three sets on the ground and I'll usually aim for like 20 crunches on each um, side per set. And then I'll do them standing as well. And that way it's almost like turning it into um, a check for Muay Thai and it works the abs as well. So it's a double purpose. And while I'm on the ground, what I'm going to do is usually do just a little bit of shrimping and I'm also going to do a neck workout. So I'm going to do my yeses and nos for you guys who don't know what that is or what that looks like. Um, you're laying flat on your back and the yeses are where you're bringing your head up and the nos are where you're turning side to side. I'll usually start with 10 left, 10 right, 10 up. And this really works your neck. You know, I've had a lot of questions from a lot of different guys over the over the past couple of months, actually, about how do you not get knocked out like what's good ways to build your neck so you don't get hurt or injured in um fighting really important especially for wrestling when you're doing a bunch of bridges and stuff neck workouts okay so i, I try to add that in as much as possible um so i'll do some shrimping again abs it does help the abs as well as um keep my jujitsu kind of um i don't know it makes me feel good and then also the um neck workouts is super, super important. And so after all of that is done, I go right in and I bang out more push-ups without the burpees. And I try to aim for 20, 30, whatever I can do. And uh, after that, I'm going to move on to the upper body workout, which is bench or bed, whatever mattress, tricep dips. So it's working the shoulders, working the traps, working the, bi uh, the triceps, rather, a little bit of biceps. You can do this on a bed or a mattress. It's actually a little more rewarding. I feel like I work more muscle groups when I when I do that. And uh, it's just a beautiful workout that you can do anywhere. And I usually aim for 15 to 20 reps per set with three sets total of those. So I also add in a little bit of weights. I didn't really put much of it in the video because this is more about body weight stuff that you can do without weights. But today I did some shoulder shrugs with 20 kilos. You can do about 15 reps three sets total. Uh, yesterday I did bicep curls and I think military presses with the free weights. And uh, that's really good to add in there, especially if you are looking to put on a little bit of size, you know, add two sets of, of something, right? Whether that's bench or curls or whatever with the weights, two to three sets, I'd say is very appropriate. And uh, it really does help put on the size and supplement, you know, what you really can't hit with the, uh, with the body weight stuff. 
after that, I stretch. You know, one thing that doing a lot of Muay Thai training in Thailand taught me with the ties is the importance of stretching. These guys stretch before they uh, start training Muay Thai and then after. It really helps you stay flexible and limber, especially when you're throwing kicks and stuff like that. One of the reasons these guys are so flexible is because they stretch so much. And that's one thing that was always missing before I went um, to Southeast Asia and trained a lot is I would try to stretch a little bit after the workout just so I wasn't so sore. But the importance of stretching, it really improves your um, tactical capabilities by like tenfold. It really does. And not to mention the fact that when you're done with these workouts, if you stretch afterwards, like you're not going to be walking around like Frankenstein. Um, even the next day, you're going to feel pretty fine. But you do have to concentrate on stretching. I don't like to stretch before I work out unless I'm doing Muay Thai. But because they say it's not good for you. But um, after the workout, I do spend um, a fairly significant amount of time on stretching. I'll do my hamstrings. I'll do my quads. Um, I'll do kind of like this area up here, you know, with um, I, I call them salutes to the sun. And then um, shoulder stretches, tricep stretches, all of that stuff. And it really, really, really has helped me out quite a bit. And after that, what I'll usually do is I'll kind of um, sit there Japanese style. I'll do like a little bit of meditation. Um, again, being out in Asia for so long has really shown me the importance of meditation. And I'm not sitting there meditating for long. I'm doing maybe 30 seconds. I'm just trying to concentrate on literally nothing and emptying my mind after a hard workout. And that helps me go into society and um, not be so pumped up. But it also um, helps me forces me to work on my meditation. Many, many, many people out in Asia like meditate every single day. And uh, I really think it's very healthy for you. So this literally just forces me to work on um, my, my warrior spirituality, I'll call it, and forces me to actually sit there and do it. And even if it's only for 30 seconds to a minute, at least I'm getting some reps in with that as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, workout. I, I hope that you will try this workout. And again, I'll list everything down in the description below the entire workout. And what I'll do is I'll even add um, some other things that I don't do every day, but you can do as well that I like to do. And it's um, it's just such a great thing. you know. Like I said, I, I put on a good amount of muscle here with this stuff. And uh, I'm also leaning out and I'm also keeping my cardio up uh, while I'm not able to uh, train tactically. So very important. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, I'll try to find some people to beat up at some point. Um, but the next couple of Saturdays will more likely be this type of stuff. Hey, comment below. Let me know what you want to see. Like while I'm not having any uh, partners to put on camera, uh, and beat them up with techniques. Like, let me know what you want to see. I can do like going around the city and uh, point out how to detect surveillance, like tech, uh, not technical, but you know, foot surveillance or whatever. Um, I can show you guys like some cool techniques about, you know, countering somebody that might want to mug you or whatever, right? Like, you know, I am a, I was certified as a foot surveillance instructor actually over in the UK. I spent like a month doing that. So if you guys want to learn some of that, I could show you some of that. If you guys want to learn some whatever, like put it down. And if I can't do it, if I don't have any experience with it, I won't do it. But um, if I can like give you guys some good information, I'd love to show you and tell you about whatever I personally have personal experience with. All right. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I will see you on the next video, guys. Cheers, my